the Great Lakes of America's Upper Midwest. The 1950s have arrived. The future is finally here. Ace Air Force pilot Felix Monclaw Jr. moves his wife and son to Wisconsin in order to serve out his deployment at Kinross Air Force Base. Within five months, they welcome their second child. Felix plans a return to civilian life and perhaps even going back to school. The future is bright, for in this gleaming Midwestern paradise, nothing bad ever happens. Growing up, Felix was well-liked by all. Everyone in his neighborhood in Moreauville, Louisiana, seemed to know him. His high school classmates even voted him prom king. While studying to be a doctor, the Korean War roused his sense of patriotism, and he joined the Air Force. By the time of his deployment at Kinross, Felix had completed advanced training with a specialized focus on the F-89 and was an expert pilot. Unfortunately, Felix had no idea he was about to fly into airspace plagued by a very particular type of terror. November 23, 1953, U.S. Air Defense Command spots an unknown target flying in restricted airspace. Kinross scrambles an F-89 Scorpion to investigate. Aboard the jet are radar operator Robert L. Wilson and pilot Felix Monclaw Jr. For 30 minutes, a scorpion races to catch the object. At an altitude of 8,000 feet, flying at a speed of 500 miles per hour, Felix closes in on the target. It's at this point that ground radar receives its final communication from the pilot. Ground radar watches and waits, expecting the blips to separate. But that's not what happens. U.S. and Canadian Air Forces jointly launch an immediate search and rescue. But Felix and Robert are never seen again. Could the Scorpion's disappearance represent evidence of UFO involvement? The day after the incident, Ground Control released a statement which asserts the jet was followed by radar until it merged with an unknown object. Almost immediately, U.S. Air Force headquarters refutes this statement claiming the radar operator must have misread the scope. In actuality, they say they know exactly what happened that night of November 23rd. The unknown target was just a Royal Canadian Air Force jet, and the F-89 Scorpion which disappeared? Well, Felix suffered from vertigo, so it's likely he crashed the jet. Unfortunately for the Air Force, the facts behind their explanations don't seem to add up. Felix had no previous history of vertigo, and the Canadians deny having any aircraft in the sky at the time of the incident. In the years following Felix's disappearance, more and more sightings of so-called unidentified flying objects emerge in America's upper Midwest. Quite famously, in 1966, scores of residents report sightings of UFOs near Ann Arbor, Michigan. Authorities claim what these people are actually seeing is swamp gas. However, in most of the areas where sightings occur, there are no swamps. Even more surprising, the Great Lakes region has a history of bizarre disappearances dating back prior to the Kinross mystery. In 1902, the SS Bannockburn and its 20 crew vanished in Lake Superior. The only wreckage found was a cork life vest washed up on a beach. And just three years before Felix's disappearance, Northwest Airlines Flight 2501 vanished while flying over Lake Michigan. Could extraterrestrials have been operating in the area for decades? 
Still to this day, the Great Lakes region sees hundreds of reports of UFOs in remote areas. Felix's story has a somewhat peculiar conclusion. In 2006, news of divers finally discovering the F-89 Scorpion surfaced via a spokesman for the Great Lakes Dive Company. The company's website published sonar images of an intact aircraft at the bottom of the lake. As reporters descended upon the story, they found something surprising. Locals had never heard of a Great Lakes dive company. Within three weeks of the Scorpion's supposed discovery, the company's website and its spokesman, who had never actually been seen in person, disappeared. Was this a hoax? Or was someone or something working very hard to convince us the jet simply crashed? In the almost 70 years since the Scorpion's disappearance, no wreckage has ever been found. And the matter of the Kinross incident remains unsolved to this day. We can only imagine what Felix encountered that night, perhaps his very last on earth.